Hello, it's me, and we're going to continue our journey through the octahedrons. Just to kind of demonstrate what's out there, maybe you've seen some of these, you're curious about it, wondering uh, what the movement is like, or you have it, maybe running into some trouble. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this as a launching point to maybe some higher order versions of this particular one. This is a 3x3 three three octahedron, um, yeah, kind of a distant relative to this. You know, what's interesting is if this looked like a pyraminx, with a little extension down here. This also looks like a specific kind of a pyraminx. In this case, the Jinx pyraminx, if you look at it. It's got the same structures, um, center over here, edges over here, a little middle over here. So basically, this is a Jinx pyraminx, but pulled down over here to make an octahedron. And just like when you took a pyraminx and pulled it down, and you ended up with what could be, in, in essence, a three by three mod, that's kind of what you turn this into. By doing that, you turn this from a Jinx Pyraminx into a 3x3 mod. The difference between this and other 3x3 modifications is it does not shape shift. The reason why it doesn't shape shift is because of this symmetric shape that it has. So because of this symmetry, much like we saw with the rhombic dodecahedrons, even though they are mods, they are not shapeshifters. But let's say you wanted a shapeshifter. You had your heart set on a shapeshifter. Well, you can get that too. And that's this guy. The reason why this guy, which I think is called a UFO um, octahedron, is a shapeshifter is because there's asymmetry. Uh, so you have this top part that can turn, and it doesn't shapeshift as it turns. And you've got this face over here, which does shape shift. And as you do 90 degree turns here, you can turn it over here. So basically this is more your typical three by three modification, solved pretty much the same way like a super cube. Just for the fun of it, why don't we go through both of these? Why don't we um, go through a little demonstration slash walkthrough slash tutorial of all of these. And you know, the scramble with this you know, we might as well study this a little bit before moving into it. This center has four colors. This center here. As we're defining faces, this is the face here. This is the center over here. So you can see two different types of centers. You've got an edge here, which is a solid color. And then between these two centers, here and here, you've got this edge, which has four colors as well. So kind of an interesting bit of brain bending as well. Now, this structure is interesting as well, which is going to be more apparent in the higher order versions of this. But uh, although this is officially the face, so to speak, you've got this face over here too. So with this, this side here between three centers defines a false face because this is not a face turner from this perspective. It, it's a face turner like this. Um, I'd call it a face turner as a modification, or you can call it a corner turner, the same way you call this a corner turner, but my contention is that it's really not, it's just a different kind of a face turner. But in any case, we're defining faces based on three centers. Remember that because that's going to be important for later versions of this. So, you know, you can see we can get some pretty good scrambles here. On this guy here, we can start to get some interesting shape changing scrambles. So we have to pay a little closer attention. So why don't we take the scramble the rest of the way, pick it up from there, double Alakazam. Okay, and we're good. So we have two very different kinds of octahedrons based on their specific structures. So let's navigate through that, through these. So what should we do first? Let's do this one first, because uh, this might take a little more attention. Let me scramble this a little better here. Looks like things randomly got back into place, unfortunately. Okay, so what's kind of fun about this one is you're carving out an interesting flying saucer shape with this. So uh, let's see how we're gonna do this. I would actually suggest starting with these top sides here uh, when doing it, and then we can kind of orient our centers here. So I'm gonna turn this over here. Now the problem with some of these modifications is sometimes the pieces are a little hard to orient, but anyway, this green goes with this center, this red here, this yellow goes with this yellow, might as well turn this in, blue to blue. So I know that all these edges are going to be solid colors. So what do we have down here? Let's go ahead and move this yellow one in. Now these are the same shape. And anytime I see something of the same shape and the same color, an edge that is the same color, always makes me wonder about parity, but I don't think we're gonna run into that with this because this is the only 
color of that shape. So I don't think we're going to run into that. Here's a blue, so we're going to put the blue edge in. Again, this is intuitive first layer 3x3 three three strategy. And okay, so that's in. This green one has to come in. Dark green, turn, turn, turn. We're good. And red, turn, turn. So I'm curious to see how the specific super cube aspects of this are going to come into play. So now we're going to do our edges here. We've got our cross, and now we're going to do our corners, rather. So this corner is in, red and um, yellow, yellow and blue, right over here. Turn, and we're just going to roll this in. Now every so often you come up on a, a mod that uh, has an interesting, unique characteristic. We'll see if anything comes out with this. Because each unique shape has potentially unique properties. That's good over here. Blue and green, right over here. Let's see if we can bat that out with the red and green. Is that down here? Should be. I'm probably looking right through it. Oh, yeah, okay, no, these, these two just need to be exchanged. Down, cross, and up. Definitely not for speed cubing, which suits me just fine anyway. Put this up, good. Turn, turn, and up. Okay, so basically, we have our first side over here. Not too shabby. So now we do our edges only layer, which is the middle layer. And uh, these edges are going to be a little different. Instead of being the solid color, they're these four colored ones. So I'm looking for the red, dark green, white, and light blue. Red, dark green, white, and light blue, which is right over. Nope, that's not it. This one, I think, is probably here. Yeah, green, yellow, red, light blue, which is over here. Uh, so which way does it go in? I think it goes in this way. Yeah, so this matches up pretty well. So we're basically going to do this the um, middle uh, swap over here, or middle exchange. This is our side. It's a little easier to see it on this particular puzzle. So to get it from the left on down, we do U R U I R I U I F I U rather F I. See, that always happens when I try to say it as I'm doing it. Can't chew gum and walk at the same time either. So that's okay there. This slides down to here, get our orientation correct. This orange has to end up on top, blue on the bottom. So from the left side down to here, we'll hold it here. UI, LI, U, L, U, F, UI, FI. So that's good over here. So what do we have next? This one. So I'll put this one in. Bing, zoom, pow, splat. Boom, splat, kerplop. That's how I like to identify the algorithm. So this is all in. This comes over here as the red has to match down here. So move this in. So you can see the flying saucer shape taking hold, taking shape, turn, turn, turn. Okay, now the top layer. Let's see how this works with this particular puzzle. Let's line these up first. We've got a bunch to line up. And then we want to see if we can orient these. So we don't have to worry about rotation because, well, they are, they're the same. So rotating it up, rotating it down doesn't actually mean anything. So all I have to do is just permute these around until one of them is in, and I shouldn't expect any parity. Or should I? Let's see. R, U, R, I, U, R, to U, R, I. Yep, this one's in. So hold it here. R, U, R, I. U, R, to U, R, I. So all these are in. Now it's just a matter of the corners. 
anything in where it needs to be, yeah, this one. So if you see one that's in, you hold it over here with the one that's supposed to be there to the right side and just do the algorithm U R U I L I U R I U I L. Now, in the past, I've not been saying the algorithms, but I just don't want to assume that everybody knows three by three strategies. Sometimes you get these as presents, sometimes you pick them up, and you might not necessarily know how to solve a three by three. So now the next step is once these are in the right position, we just rotate them um, in the proper orientation. And this is all by doing R, I, D, I, R, D moves. So we do that until this is in. So R, I, D, I, R, D, R, I, D, I, R, D, R, I, D, I, R, D, R, I. D, I, R, D, and we're good. We just turn this over here and do the same thing. To me, this is the magic step because it still is bewildering to me that this ends up solving it. Turn, turn, a little stiff, a little stiff. Hasn't popped on me yet, but the evening's still young. And then finally here, turn, turn, turn. Turn, 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 bang, zoom, almost home. And for reasons that I can't say for sure, it just works. Okay, and it's solved. And the flying saucer has landed. So, a neat, cute little modification. A nice introduction to super cute concepts. Um, all right, let's apply this to this guy over here. Um, now, in this, it was the edges that were one color and one shape. In this case, it's the corners that are one color and one shape, and the edges are of two colors. Let's see how that translates. And we still have centers that are all pretty much the same. So we can arbitrarily start off with this one here. We can just line things up. And what we're doing is we're putting in sides. We're identifying sides. This is the wrong orientation. Turn it here so the blue ones are here. Now, pay attention to what we're doing because the next level is going to be a lot more difficult with this. Because when we add the fourth layer as a 4x4, four four, it really shifts things on us. This is the third layer version of it. But you can see how straightforward this is. So in terms of edges, I want the red and the blue. Where is the red and the blue? Right over here. So move this down layer here. Turn, turn. Okay, now we've got to line it up with here. The challenging thing about this is getting these lined up appropriately. So this is good here. Now the green and light blue. Right over here. Is it oriented correctly? Yes. So we're getting our cross here. Dark green and uh, yellow. Oh, light green, yellow, rather. What am I talking about? Move this down here. And that's not lined up correctly. So I have to find a way to bring it where it's supposed to be. So I just have to skew it a little bit here. This is done intuitively. I'm moving kind of fast, but there are really no tricks here. Red and yellow right here. not going to work there so what I have to do is swing it around bring it up so I can change orientation and bring it down across and up and swing this back up all right so we have an obvious cross over here and now these edges are fairly simple yellow to yellow turn 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 green which is over here so we'll leave that Go for now, bump it out with a blue here. Light blue, turn, turn, turn. And now where was that green? Here it is, turn, turn, turn. And red, right here, turn, turn.
turn, turn. Arc. Okay, so we have our uh, first layer here. Do our edges only layer like so. Let's see, what do we have here? This one can come down from here to here with red on the bottom. And that same algorithm we went through. Turn, turn, and down, so we're good. This can move down into here, I believe. Turn, turn, turn. This one moves a little more smooth, as you can see. So, kind of like doing this one a little better than the UFO. But, can't blame it. It's got all these shape-shifting pieces and whatnot. Okay, here's the light blue and white. This will shift down to here. Turn, turn. Turn, turn, and... Turn. Okay, are we good? No, nope. we still have this. This has to be bounced out. Turn. Turn, turn, turn. And this has to be bounced in. Turn. Turn. Whoa! I've never had a puzzle try to get away from me like that. Try to escape. Now, what was that move that I was about to do? Turn, turn, okay. Okay, so now we have this layer over here. Let's orient it appropriately. Boy, this thing loves to turn. So there he, we've got our sides um, oriented correctly. These are our edges. What's upside down, what's right side up? Well, in our white layer, you can see this is upside down and this is upside down. So these two are upside down, which means these two are either right side up or upside down. Right side up, right side up. So we have ourselves an L. So we're gonna use this as our F rotation. F face because we go just to the right of our first one that's upside uh, of our first one that's right side up because this is our L over here. So F R U R I U I F I, which means this must be our line over here. We can confirm it if we want. That fits, and this obviously fits. So we do it again. F R U, R I, U I, F I. So all these are actually rotated right. So is there one that's already in? Yeah, this one. So we just do our R U, R I, U, R, 2 U, R I. And we do it again to get it all in. R U, R I, U, R, 2 U, R I. So you can see our top cross is here. This is exactly the non-parity version. This is in, out, 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 which means that if this is our F face, we put uh, the corner that's in to the left and we do our uh, algorithm here that we've already gone through. And one more time. Turn and turn and we got it. It's solved. Okay, so this was just kind of a simple, quick demonstration of some of the basic 3x3 three three, um, octahedrons. Kind of put that together with a little bit of our family picture here so that we can see them. Uh, so now we're going to move into higher level versions of this. And don't let the simplicity of this puzzle fool you. The next one is more than just a standard 4x4 four four mod. It's got its own characteristics, so stay tuned for that. And uh, certainly worthy additions to any mod family should you have it. Thanks for watching.